you. Good afternoon. It's very nice to be here with you. I find your message, Rich, to be very apropos of where I find myself and I find this club. There's a certain forcefulness of projecting one's voice that could come across as authoritarian or it could come across as just being loud and clear. You know, when you were talking, Rich, about setting goals, I'm willing to pay the price. Every day for the last seven days, I've invested time in reaching out to as many people in our club as possible. So I'd like to go around the room, but in the interest of time, let me just say thank you to every person that took the time to talk to me, to write to me, to text to me. There are concerns about how to create what I think is our dream come true for our club. A safe and supportive place to achieve our primary objective, which is what? Learn how to speak in public. Learn how to speak in public. Improve your speaking and leadership skills. That is the zenith. That's why we're here. But easier said than done. What if you hear somebody's speech and it rankles you to the core? And then you are called upon to be their evaluator. You're filled with emotion, and yet you've been told what the objectives of the speaker has asked you to evaluate them on. <coughs> Not an easy task. So as your president, I'm going to offer you something that we've never done before. If you're the evaluator, and you are in such a state where you're not able, with dignity and respect, point by point, to deliver the evaluation, it's perfectly acceptable to say, I'm sorry, I'm too upset, I'm going to recuse myself as evaluator. Now, why do we have that as a value? Because our purpose is not to have arguments and dissension. Our point here is to create safety for skill building. <coughs> Are we going to censor political speech? Absolutely not. Are we going to tell people they can't bring up subjects like sex or money or religion? Absolutely not. But here's what we are going to do. We're going to create a higher level of awareness. When you're in a group and everybody shares your leaning, except for one or two people, you might inadvertently make remarks or outwardly make remarks that disturb the unity of our community. If you look at the word community, you see the word unity. That's what our club is all about. Mr. Toastmaster. If I could just give a, an example of some of that. One of the things I learned, I, I just finished a four-day negotiation in which my client, the buyer, walked away from a deal that because we reached an impasse. And it seemed like the other side was making all the demands and asking us to make all the negotiations, I mean, there's concessions. And so normally, under normal circumstances, because my personality is amiable and, and expressive, I would regress into my task-oriented mode. I would get angry, I would get upset. And the best piece of advice I've received recently, and it seems to be working, is to try to, when I find myself under emotional uh, stress, or if it's coming at me emotionally, is to remain emotionally detached from the outcome. <laughs> so I would have been really upset after four days of negotiation about losing this deal, but I'm not upset about it because there's another house for this client. I'll find them another place. And I thought it would have been a bad deal if he had accepted the last part. So my, my point is, try to, if you find yourself getting angry or upset about something, try to remain emotionally detached from the outcome. Now it's hard to do when it's personal and somebody's screaming in your face, but it's worked for me, maybe it'll work for you. Okay, next I'd like to introduce our grammarian for the day. 
which is uh, Bob Avalonis. Thank you, Rich. I am a last minute grammarian due to the absence of John Fantasia. And I hadn't had a lot of time to think of a word, but I'm just thinking about the theme, I think, and what Rob just said in his, his speech, the word is going to be respect. Now, we have strong opinions, we disagree, and we feel strongly we're, we're, we're right, but we have to respect their views about the people. They also feel very strongly about their point of view. So the only way we're again we can get along is to have respect for one another. Now, moving on to the grammarians of the job, I'll just briefly state it. You all, we don't have any guesses, so you all know what my job is. And I'm pretty strict, actually, about interjections. I, when I'm watching talking heads on TV and sports and uh, politics, they use a lot of a lot of interjections. The one that's I'm hearing a lot now is, I really do. Well, you've already said it. You don't have to say it again. I really do. You do whatever you said. So I'm going to be looking for, a, a, I'm looking for interjections. It's much better to just pause if you can't think of the next thing to say. Just pause and wait. Um, Amzanaz or another, um, Amzanaz are another interjection that we uh, have to look for. So that is my job as grammarian. And don't take it personally because the professional speakers do it all the time. So uh, just do your, do your best you can. Back to my Toastmaster. When I hear the word respect, the first thing that comes to mind is Aretha Franklin. Right. Which brings us to the next point in our program, a thought joke, which will be brought to us by Brendan O'Brien. Brendan?